So now I want to introduce you to an idea of why this is important. But again, the key thing to keep in your mind this whole time is that the op amp will give whatever output it needs for the two inputs to be about the same. If it needs to increase its output, it will increase its output. If it needs to decrease its output, it will decrease its output. The op amp will change how it needs to until they are the same. Assuming, of course, that the output doesn't try to go higher than the voltage supply or any of the other conditions that affect it. Okay, so now we're going to come on to an idea of a virtual earth approximation. And I'm going to change my circuit design slightly. If you think back to uh, what we were talking about earlier, we've had so far V in connected to the non-inverting input. And we've had nothing, well, we've just had the output directly connected to the inverting input. Now, however, I'm going to change things around slightly. And I'm going to connect my non-inverting input to ground. In other words, to zero potential difference. Now it's really important that you get this idea that zero is whatever we could decide to call it. It's not some kind of weird black hole of current that can never have a voltage. It just means it's where we choose to take zero from. And in general, on a circuit board, that's why I keep talking to you about this idea of voltage rails. Um, you just have somewhere on your circuit board that you say is zero, and you connect any devices that need a earth, like we've done here, a ground, you connect it to that line, and they all have a common point. Okay, So I have the non-inverting input now connected to zero volts, and now I put an input voltage into my inverting input. So what's going to happen now? Well, let's again, I'm a big fan of these graphs. Let's think about our voltage time graph once again. And let's just say, well, no, we don't even need to give a value, do we? Um, so let's have V in plotted as usual. Oh no, it'll be a straight line, won't it? So there's V in, and we're saying it's constant. So look at this circuit. Initially, looking at the gain equation, we can see that V inverting is much larger than zero, which is my non-inverting input. So V out is going to try to become negative. So it's going to start to drop off towards zero. Like that. But let's think about what's happening now at the inverting input. What I've got is a potential coming in that is V in and it's meeting a potential from the output of V out. So what is the potential at the inverting input? Well, over there, I can say that the inverting input, the potential that the op amp sees there, that is equal to V in take away V out. So what will happen to our value of V inverting? Well, initially it was zero. Sorry, no, initially it was uh, plus two. So it was the same. But now it's decreasing over time, just like that. And it will reach a point where it's equal to zero. Or indeed, it goes slightly below zero. So this, blue, this yellow line here is V inverting. And the green line is V out. What happens when V inverting, the inverting voltage, becomes 
smaller than zero. Well, when it's smaller than zero, I'm going to have in my open loop gain equation zero take away a negative voltage. Minus minus becomes a positive. So V out is going to want to go positive. And once again, we're going to get stuck in this negative feedback loop where V out, sorry, uh, yeah, V inverting is trying to be equal to zero volts because zero volts is V plus. So even if I make the non-inverting input zero, that equation from earlier still holds. With negative feedback, the op amp will do whatever is necessary to make the inverting input about the same as the non-inverting input. And in this case, that means that V out is going to oscillate around with V inverting to the negative of V in. Now, the virtual earth approximation is just a, a special case of negative feedback. It's exactly the same as what we did earlier in this lesson, but this time we are using the idea that there is a point in the circuit here. I'm going to call point P and I'm going to say that if V inverting is zero volts, this point here, point P, which is identical to the non -inver the inverting input, that is about zero volts. It doesn't. It's not going to be exactly zero volts because I said here it will actually oscillate up and down around it, but it will be almost zero volts, and it will oscillate between those two values. Now, it's really important that you are clear in your head and you can believe that point P will be zero volts if the the invert the non-inverting input is connected to zero volts. It comes down again to this clear point that if there's negative feedback, the op amp will do whatever it has to do to make these two inputs equal each other. And if these two inputs are going to equal each other, if one of them is zero, the op amp will kick out whatever output is necessary here to make it zero here. If you get that principle and you understand it, what comes next is super easy.